Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. In our ongoing series on furniture making for beginners, we started by building this case. Now I'm going to show you how to put, do a shiplap back. It's a really nice way of having a solid wood back and at the same time appropriately dealing with wood movement. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. So this is the case that we started with, and in our first video we made it. And if you haven't seen that, we'll leave a link below if you want to get caught up. And you'll notice that what we did is we left a rabbit all the way around. Now I normally like to have my back enclosed in a groove, but the problem is that it means it has to be even wider to house the, the uh, back. Plus this is going to be attached to the wall so you're never going to see it. But it's, uh, it makes a really nice detail when you apply a solid wood back. You get beyond a certain width and if you just had one big solid piece of wood you wouldn't have enough room to allow for the seasonal expansion. Remember, this piece of wood is not going to change in its length, but it's going to expand in, this, in the uh, moisture wet times of the year, and it's going to shrink in the dry. So having a solid wood back, you have to allow for that expansion. I'll show you this little example, just another little case I'm doing. And there's your, I haven't actually put it in place yet, it's just held on with some masking tape, but I just wanted to lay it out. So you have one, two, three, four, five pieces. The panel on, the door panel is actually going to have redwood or uh, Douglas fir, so I thought I'd throw a piece in the back. Now that brings me to this point. This case is going to be relatively shallow, so there's three reasons why I'm going with the shiplap back. Number one, um, I'm going to be hanging my, uh, it's, this is, case is going to be made to hold all of my protective equipment, ear headphones, uh, dust mask, and uh, my eye things, and anyway. So it needs to be somewhat sturdy. That would kind of eliminate a, a really thin plywood back. So that's one of the reasons why I want solid wood. Number two, as wide as it is, you've got to allow for seasonal expansion. This is, this is 17 inches wide, so seasonally you could see a quarter of an inch movement shrinking and expanding on something that size. And the third thing is that uh, I want, because it's a shallow cabinet, when you open that door, you're going to really see the back. And I wanted to have a, just dress it up a little bit. That's actually the reason why I decided to put that Douglas fir strip down the middle. But it also helps solve a problem that I'll get into a little bit later when it comes to dealing with the seasonal expansion. So you may never have heard of shiplap before, so I'm gonna take this one apart so you can see exactly how it works. There's what your pieces look like. You have a rabbit or a rebate, depending on what country you're in, on opposite, opposite edges. So when I put this in place, if we start with this one, this is going to be secured to this side. We can actually glue it in place, and the preferential way of doing this is to actually nail it in place. So I'll glue it, and I'll probably put oh, half a dozen finished nails along there, but only along this side, because as this piece expands, it needs to be free to move this way. Because it's glued here, all the movement has to go in that direction. So then we're going to take the next piece, and we're going to lay that rabbit opposite of this rabbit. It's going to sit there like that. Now, you can see that there, you, the gap is going to be the same, so when I put it in here and put it tight, now there's no room. When I move it over like this, you now have approximately an eighth of an inch of movement. So what we'll do is we'll put one nail right here, not touching this one, and one down here. What that's going to do is going to hold this piece fast, and the rabbit is going to keep this one nice and tight. All the movement will go that way. Now forget that for a second and come over here. We repeat the same process, just reversed. So this is a square edge, it's going to go right up tight into here. We'll nail and glue it. The rabbit, the opposite one will sit on there, we'll fasten this. One nail here, one nail there. That'll keep this in place and hold this one. All the movement goes that way. And then in the middle, we've got kind of a big fat T, and that's going to sit right there. And because it's a narrow piece, we really don't need to move, worry too much about that expansion. I might actually put a daub of glue underneath, but I'll put 
oh, probably two nails about a half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch apart there and there. And that will hold this piece in place and that place. Now, all of these are free to expand as much as an eighth of an inch, yet they're all held in place so they stay nice and tight on the inside. Okay, let's figure this out. So we've got a space 18 and a 16th of an inch to fill. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my halfway mark, which is going to be 9 and a 32nd. So there's my center line. Now that piece, I'm going to cut a piece of this old growth Douglas fir. And that's going to go down the middle. I'm actually going to use the full width. I think that is an inch and a half. It's actually a little more than an inch and a half. Let's go with an inch and a half. I can trim it up a little bit. So this piece is going to occupy an inch and a half. Now we're going to have two full-size pieces going from here over. But some part of this is going to be covered. So when we look on the inside, we want to see everything nice and symmetrical. So we've got to decide where we're going to put that joint. And we can easily find the center of it. But that's not quite the way we're going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to get, make a story pole. So I'm going to go get a piece of lumber that is 18 to 16 long, and we'll draw it out on there, which is going to make this a whole lot easier, and then we can put it in place to make sure everything works. Okay, so here's my story pole. Now, it may seem like overkill on something this size, but definitely on a bigger piece, where the back is going to be an in integral part of it, you want to make sure you get all this right. And our, we won't bother with our center line, we'll just go with our That piece. Now this piece is going to be shaped like a T. And I'm going to have this side facing inside the cabinet. This is the part you're going to see. So I'm based on the size of these pieces, I'm going to allow for a quarter of an inch rabbit. So that means this piece is going to come like this. that to be in a little better spot. Okay, that's what this centerpiece is going to be shaped like. Now over here, I guess we can go from the center of the, uh, well, now we have to decide how much we're going to see. And if we've got a quarter of an inch, then I'm going to suggest we want an eighth of an inch gap. So that piece is going to start right there. We can actually draw that in. And there's going to be a quarter inch rabbit on that one as well. So we'll go from here over to the quarter mark. This will continue on right here. And there will be that piece. So this one comes in. We can eliminate this in the middle to help it show a little bit better. Okay, so if you're following me, here's the rabbit on this piece, and there's the rabbit on the center piece. So if we consider you want to we'll measure from, from the middle of the gap. I took that off by mistake. We're going to see from the middle of the gap to the middle of the gap. So all we really need to do is just take this dimension which is 7 and 15 sixteenths. So 3 and a half is 7. 
So we're 30 seconds shy of four inches. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be the center of this one. So we'll come in here and draw it. Since that's the center, we'll go an eighth of an inch on either side of it. We'll just draw a faint line. The good news is we're going to do the exact same on the other side, so we don't have to do this twice. So there's our gap. The rabbit is on this one down here, so the rabbit is going to be up here on this one. And we know that the rabbit is going to go over a quarter of an inch from this gap, so we're going to be over here. But we're just on this end closest to me, so nothing out here. We'll start the line right there. And we'll continue it over. Finish it here. And then carry that over. Eliminate these two lines for clarity. Now this piece, we know that the rabbit is going to be on the uh, back side, so there's your eighth inch, which will be the edge of that piece. And then this rabbit is going to come over a quarter of an inch as well. This will all make sense eventually. So this one is going to go from, from here. That line gets continued and this line gets continued right over. So this piece is going to be four and three eighths. So we're gonna have two of them because one here and the opposite will be over here. Two that are four and three eighths by whatever our length is. Twenty, uh, we'll cut them, to, we'll plane them to fit but it's, we're gonna go 24 and a 16th. I know I do this the other way around, so I'm going to change this. 24 and a 16th. I like to do the length first, times 4 and 3 eighths. And these are 5 16ths of an inch thick. I didn't mention that, but 5 16ths is going to be heavy enough to secure the hooks or whatever we're going to use to hang them gear, and yet it's not overly thick, and it'll sit nice and flush, so when we put this against the wall, it'll fit nice and tight. So there's our outside ones. Now these ones are going to be a little bit shorter. So we'll measure them from right here to right here. And that is going to be four and an eighth. So those, then we're going to have two that are 24 and a sixteenth by four and one eighth. And they're also five sixteenths. And then one centerpiece. These are these four are going, to, are going to be pine. This one is going to be Douglas fir. This one is going to be an inch and a half. Wait a minute. Get our length first. Twenty-four and a sixteenth by inch and a half by five sixteenths. Good idea to always rip your widest pieces first. Then if you screw up, you can always make it narrower, but not so the other way. So we want two that are going to be four and three eighths. Check and make sure I've got good edges. Brought my story pull over so I can make sure right off of this how each piece you don't want to end up cutting the rabbit on the wrong side or two rabbits on the wrong side. First thing we've got to do is we know that we want the rabbit to be a quarter of an inch wide so I'm going to measure from my fence to the left side of the blade. That's a quarter and we only want to go half the thickness and these are five sixteenths so I'm going to do a little trial and error with this. Mm -hmm. 
Start off lower than you, definitely lower than what you need, so you can always raise it up. Almost. Okay, so an eighth and a half, which is uh, three thirty seconds. Okay, so now we have to decide where they're going to go. So let's get these. Actually, I'm going to lay them over here. So we have them the exact way that they're going to go in the cabinet. Now, if I've got any defect at all, I'm going to have that to the back. That's nice and clean. A little bit of a knot right there. It's on both sides, so it doesn't matter. This piece, I got a little bit of a pitch pocket. Uh, so I want the good side to be down. Part of that will get cut off. This one's clean on both sides. So is that. So, nope. actually, I think we got it mixed up. We do that's the wide one. And that's the wide one. So we know we got a square edge on this side, and our rabbit is going to be up here facing the back. So this first one. It's cut like this. That's a little deeper than it should have been. I'm going to bring that down a bit. That goes back here. This one, just make sure this one, the rabbit, is going to be cut facing the back. a little bit high. So let's put that the way it's going to be. This side that faces the front when you open is going to be the bottom side. So that means that we're going to have the rabbit on the front side of this. So it's going to be here and here. So I can rip it like that and flip it over. like that. That's going to go like this. Same thing with this one. And this one We're going to have full width on the on the uh, back, so we want to cut our rabbits. I'm going to turn that this way, so that'll be cut off. We want to cut our rabbits on this side, which is the one that's going to show when you open the door. Should be using a push stick. rabbits are on the downside. So that's all of those cuts. Now we're going to stand these on their edge and rip them. I'm going to shut the saw off. And this is where we need to get exactly leave half of it so that when one lays on the other they actually touch without holding one up higher out of the rabbit than the other. So instead of using that piece of cherry I'm going to actually use this. Should be right. Just get a little bit of a cut. That looks to be right. I'm going to drop that down so we get the height right.
This pine has a lot of pitch in it, so it picks up and dirt uh, shavings stick to it. Now let's try this. Let's see. Now we got to take a little more off. Raise that up just a little bit. No, still, see if we if we were to put that up there, it doesn't sit down tight to the tabletop. So we've got to take off a little bit more. Okay, that's what we want, clothes like that. So when they're put together, we'll end up with a gap about like Okay, rabbits are all cut. Now, I want to get these to lay in there up tight against the side. Now, normally I would nail these, be in shiplap, but I think I'm going to screw them in this time, simply because we're going to use the back to hold pegs that are going to support all of our uh, personal protective gear and taking it on and off all the time there'd be a fair bit of stress on those pegs so we want this to be a little more secure and I think I'll put a little bit of glue right where the screw goes just to kind of I call it welding the wood so I want this to lay in there nice and tight even though it's going to be against the back and you're never going to see it it's still nice to have it fit snugly so I've got uh, these quick grip clamp quick grip clamps with which are a real light duty and I just want to see if I can pull that over. I suspect I may need to go in and just clean out these corners a little bit. I'm going to mostly just undercut it a small amount in case it's down in the corner where the problem is. Same thing on this one. Okay, second one in place. Now that's a little bit high, so after I put that in, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna plane that flush so when we put that against the wall, you only see where this makes contact with the wall. So now to get our spacing, and I'm just gonna put these in and play with it until we come up with what we want. Now, I had a friend recently send me these spacer blocks, which are going to come in real handy. I'm going to go with 5 30 seconds first. So we put that. That leaves a little bit too much. I don't think we can go 3 sixteenths. I think that's going to be too much. Yeah, it is. So somewhere in between. But I'll use the 5 30 seconds for right now. It's not a huge deal, but if you're going to do it, you may as well get as close to perfect as you can. That leaves us just a little bit. In fact, we can we could eyeball that and just split the difference. Okay. So we're pretty confident we can glue about oh an inch and a half maybe in from the edge. I'm gonna put 
put a little bit along there, and that'll help strengthen that thin rabbit, meaning this piece, although it's never really going to be in a position where it needs any extra support hanging on the wall. Now I can nail, I'll nail this just because it's going to be, uh, the glue will offer enough support. I'm just going to put a clamp on there to pull that tight. And one in the middle. Push that down. Okay, those two are in. I made sure to set them low enough I can come in and plane that flush. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use that 530 second spacer. My nail, actually, uh, nail or screw? I think I can get away with Nails, I'm gonna change my mind on that. I'm gonna use a little longer finish nails. I'm gonna put a little dab of glue right underneath where it's going to go. Not too much, because you don't want it to slide over and seize the other one. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double up. I'll put two of them. They're close enough together that there won't be a problem for expansion. But it'll give me a little extra holding power. Okay, the final one, we can screw, we'll, we'll put two nails in that and we can actually glue that in place because that one's not going to move. Everything is going to go this way or that way from that point. Just do that by eye. Oh, I was afraid of that. 
That just started to split. Shoot. Got away with that on the pine, but not on the uh, on the Douglas fir. So what I can do, I'm just looking for a piece of steel. It doesn't matter. Oh, what have I got? Right here. Okay, what I'm going to do is just blunt the tip of that nail. And that should prevent the split. Old carpenter's trick. And hopefully, that's not terribly noticeable. That pine is so nice and soft that you can nail really close to the edge and not worry about it, but Douglas firs a little more brittle. Okay, before we plane that back, let's just have a look at the inside. See how it looks. Make sure no nails came through anywhere. A little bit of glue to get rid of them, we're done there. But that, that makes for a really nice dressy back. Of course, the next thing we're going to do is do, uh, we've got to fit and then install our door, but the back's done. I may probably put a cleat up inside there just as a nailing strip or a strip that we can use to fasten it to the wall. Okay, so this is just a little bit proud. Now you want to make sure your nails are down deep enough. And I also want to make sure that I don't accidentally hit that lip and break a piece off. So I'll do this carefully. Now if you're wondering about a finish, this is a piece of shop furniture, so I'm not putting a finish on it. But if it was a piece of house furniture, then I would have pre-finished, meaning either oiled or sprayed each of these pieces before I put it on. It probably would have been the last thing I did because you want to do the, you want to finish the inside of your cabinet before you install them as well. And if you need the place to glue, like I did, you put a piece of masking tape on the base of that rabbit and then just take it off after the finish before you apply the back. Okay, that's that's good. Another pass right here. And yet another. Okay. A little high right there. There you go, your ship lap back. I think it's one of the nicest looking backs that you can apply. You could actually go in and cut a little bead on here. You could put a little chamfer on there. I don't think I would do a radius, but it makes for a nice, uh, a nice solid back and also dresses it up. There you go. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.